Uh, first and foremost, uh, welcome everyone. Um, you know, John Carroll once again earned the number two spot among uh, the best regional universities in the Midwest, according to the 2021 uh, U.S. News and World Report Best Colleges Rankings. And that's because we strive for more than what's academically required, personally required, uh, and, and socially required. And we try to empower you to achieve what others see as improbable. Uh, we recognize that lifelong exploration connects us to endless discovery and wonder and joy. And so you'll graduate unafraid to pursue the unknown. Um, we are so happy that you joined us for the computer science, data science, and mathematics uh, presentation. My name is Brandon Kreitz, and I'm actually an enrollment manager with the Office of Admission. Um, I might work with you, you might have another enrollment manager, but uh, my goal is to be the ultimate resource for you uh, as you are admitted to John Carroll University, you enroll all the way up to the point where you're seated in class for that first day. Um, I'm one of your co-hosts for today, but I'll be taking a backseat approach while our esteemed experts uh, kind of take the lead. And so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Barbara D'Ambrosia, who will be uh, kind of our, our, our next host. So uh, take it away. All right, thank you, Brandon. Hi, I'm Dr. D'Ambrosia. I am the chair of the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. I'm delighted to be speaking with you today. Um, we have another faculty member with us, Dr. Dan Palmer, and um, three and three students um, in alphabetical order. They are Courtney Crawford, Daniel Droder, and Nick Welch. Um, they'll be speaking to you a little bit later about their experiences in their various programs. But I want to start with um, a quick overview of the programs in the department. So let me see if I can um, share my screen here. And there we go. So, um, so as I said, we, we're the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. We actually have a third new program, which is data science. And we're gonna go through them in alphabetical order. So I'm gonna let Dr. Palmer start by talking about the computer science program. Okay, hi everybody, uh, welcome. We're very glad that you're here. Um, we have uh, two different programs within the uh, computer science, or two different majors within the computer science program. We have a straightforward computer science major, and we also have computer science with healthcare technology. Uh, both of those majors are the same for the first two years, so you can kind of get a sense of what you like to do, and uh, you get, get the same background for both programs. And then once you've uh, reached your sophomore year, you get to choose uh, I want to continue on with computer science or I want to go on with the healthcare technology. Now, um, part of what we do is we prepare you to go out into the world. Um, um, a lot of our computer science majors uh, go out and get programming jobs. Some go on to graduate school, um, but they all go into the, have a lot of opportunity in the technology field. The uh, computer science with healthcare technology major is actually a superset of the computer science major. So if you choose to go into healthcare, uh, computer science with healthcare technology, and then later you wanna apply for a job that's not necessarily in healthcare, that works too. Uh, in fact, I was just speaking to one of our graduates who, was, who had actually done that. Um, and we also have a minor in computer science so that if you're interested in another field, but you wanna have a background in technology, you can get that minor in computer science and that will also serve you in whatever major uh, you, you work towards. Um, one of the big things about our computer science program, sort of our main emphasis is our software engineering uh, uh, emphasis. We have a capstone program in which each student will uh, be part of a software development team that will work on the same project for an entire semester. Uh, and it's not some crazy project that I thought of, hey, make this or make that. We actually go out and get a client who is not, not, not uh, directly involved with our class who needs a piece of software written. So we, we emulate or simulate the uh, professional software development environment as closely as you can in an academic setting. Um, we also have a lot of upper level classes that are um, of interest to folks. We, we have a mobile technology, we have a game design class, um, we have a cybersecurity program. Uh, so there's a lot of different opportunities uh, if you're interested in technology and you, uh, you have a logical mind. All right, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Palmer. Um, data science is our newest major. Um, we just debuted it a few years ago. We're going to be graduating our third class of data science majors this spring. Um, as you all know, data is 
big, it's everywhere. And we need more and more professionals who are able to work with and understand data. So we have a Bachelor of Science in Data Science, we have a minor in Data Science, and we also have a minor in Statistics. A lot of people ask frequently, what is data science? People, people usually heard about statistics. You may have taken a statistics course in high school. Um, data science is a, a relatively new field that blends the statistical side of data analytics with the data management and engineering. So it's at, at an intersection of computer science and statistics. Um, it involves a lot of work with databases um, and, and stuff like that. Our program is interdisciplinary. Students are required to take some courses in other disciplines to see how data is used in those disciplines. We have a number of elective courses on cutting edge topics like blockchain technology and machine learning. Um, our students learn to work with extremely large data sets. So, you know, every time you shop, your, you uh, swipe your secured, or, gee, I can't talk today, your preferred shopper's card at the grocery store, it's collecting all this data about you and every other customer. That's millions and millions of pieces of data. And our data science students learn how to manage that size data set. Um, data science is proving to be a very popular second major um, or a minor, or uh, reverse that, people are earning a major in data science and then minoring in whatever application area they're choosing. So a, a major in data science and a minor in political science, for example, is very popular. We also have um, a more traditional mathematics program. We offer a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics and a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics Teaching. Uh, we have a minor in Mathematics and a minor in Actuarial Science. So if you're not familiar with Actuarial Science, um, that's the, the route that a lot of people who are interested in risk management, financial planning, um, insurance companies hire a lot of people in Actuarial Science um, to, to determine um, things like pricing based on life expectancy and stuff like that. So it's a lot of statistical work that's combined with a, a robust mathematical background and some understanding of economics and finance. One of the common questions that we get all the time about the mathematics program is, well, you know, I like math, but I, I don't wanna be a teacher. And first of all, I wanna say, I find teaching to be very rewarding and some of our students do go on to long careers as teachers. But I recognize that teaching is not everybody's cup of tea. So here are some things that our math alumni have done and are doing. Um, they, some of them become actuaries. Many of them particularly recently are going into analyst positions at a wide variety of different companies. Um, we've had math alums going on to be doctors. In fact, that's Nick Welch's plan is to major in math and become a doctor. Um, we've had math majors go on to be lawyers. Um, they become mathematicians, either working in industry or working in a university setting. One of our math alums is an NFL football coach. Some of our math alums have become software developers. Some of them become teachers and many more. Really, we, we tell students that if you can do math, you can do anything. I realize I'm talking very fast, I apologize for that. Um, so across the board, here are just a few of the companies where our recent computer science, data science, and math students now have careers. Um, and I've chosen kind of the bigger name companies to, to give you an idea that we really are competing with students from larger schools um, for positions in, in high profile companies. But a lot of our students go to smaller places in the area. Um, all of our students get jobs. Many of them have placements before they even graduate. Um, and the ones who don't have jobs lined up before they graduate almost always get the, them within four to six months. So we have a really good placement rate in, in our department's programs. And then I, I have to brag um, every year in March, we do this thing called Celebration of Scholarship. It's a week-long event 
that students and faculty use to demonstrate the scholarly work that they've been doing over the past year. So the results of independent research or capstone projects or anything else that kind of highlights the scholarly work that we do. Um, last year, COVID hit just a couple of weeks before the celebration of scholarship. And so we had to cancel it. Um, this year, it's gonna happen virtually. We're looking forward to it. Um, but the last one that we had, so remember last year's was canceled. So in 2019, um, there's a poster session every year and five of the 10 um, winners of the poster competition came from students in our department. So you see, we have a, a mathematics teaching major that was Nick Beta. Ian Glass was a computer science minor and a math minor. Arshia Merriam was a data science major. Um, Morgan Might and James Millard and Zach Zenda were computer science majors. Morgan and Zach were also math majors, or sorry, Morgan was a math minor, Zach was a math major. So we're doing really good research type projects for the students who are interested in doing that. We, we don't force students to do independent research, but the opportunities are certainly there for students who want them. And with that, I'm gonna um, stop sharing and have the students talk. Um, as I mentioned <coughs> before, we have Courtney Crawford, Dan Droder, and Nick Welch. I'm gonna ask them to tell us a little bit about their experiences in alphabetical order. And I was noticing um, before we started this meeting, they are alphabetically ordered by first name, by last name, and by program. So alphabetical order definitely makes the most sense. So let me stop sharing here. And I'm gonna turn it over to Courtney, who is alphabetically first. Hi, I'm Courtney. Um, so I'm a computer science major and I'm minoring in data science and uh, actuarial science. So I've got a little bit of all three of the programs. Um, but something that I really enjoyed about um, being in the computer science program and in this department in general is the small sizes of the classes. You get to really get to know your classmates and your professors. So you're with these same people every, you know, every semester, every year. And I really enjoy that because then you get to make those connections. Um, I also really appreciate um, the department's opportunities that they have for working. Um, I have been a TA for a computer science lab. I've done uh, a graded math homework. And um, I've also not necessarily tied to this department, but as a computer science major, I worked in um, IT and got some experience there. So there's a lot of opportunities for people in these majors for working. Um, uh, some of the courses that I've enjoyed and stuff have been, uh, you've seen them in the presentation, some of the cool ones. There's like for electives, there's game design, there's machine learning. So some of these really cool topics that um, may uh, designate where you wanna go after you graduate. Um, and uh, being in this department has led to me getting two summer internships. Um, they've both been pretty successful. Um, the one I had last summer, I actually got a full-time offer for that I'll start um, in probably May or June. And I've also been working part-time during the school year with them. So they've been uh, really helpful with making sure that I can work and do classes at the same time. So everything's been pretty great. Um, kind of been my great experience with being in this department. All right, thank you, Courtney. Uh, Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, everybody. I hope uh, everyone's doing well here. Um, my name's Daniel. <clears throat> I'm a senior year data science major here. Um, and Carol's kind of given a lot of really fun outlets for me with uh, data science. Um, with Carol, I've kind of uh, really found my niche with programming. Um, I'm a data science major, as I said, and I specialize really heavily in machine learning. Um, I've had internships since my freshman year. Um, I'm working on publishing some research with really, really fun types of neural networks. Um, and for my capstone project, I built a self-driving car, which was really, really cool. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dan. Um, Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Nicholas or Nick. Um, I'm a mathematics major uh, with a minor in chemistry, also on a pre-med track, so I'm kind of all over the place and all over the departments. 
Um, kind of like what D Dr. D'Ambrosia kind of mentioned, I'm also kind of just, you know, on the track to become a doctor. So I just want to point out that it is really possible to kind of be in really any, any major actually, but mathematics specifically, um, it really does kind of help being in math going on to the track of being a doctor. So it is actually really possible. Um, the class load will be um, a little bit heftier just because, you know, math doesn't actually go with the biology, the chemistry that's required for becoming a doctor. Um, being a mathematics major, I do kind of just want to point out that you don't not only learn math, but you kind of also learn just kind of problem solving, which actually helps with all of the classes. So for me personally, this semester, I'm in a formal logics class. So, you know, just being able to solve the problems, you know, uh, with, you know, mathematics base is just really easy for me, not easy for me, but, you know, it's just, it's just helpful, you know, being with a math base. Um, one other thing I also want to touch on is I was also part of the STEM scholarship. So being a part of that scholarship allowed me to be in a learning living community as a freshman, which I want to highlight here, John Carroll. Um, the learning living community is basically a floor here. Uh, it was actually in Campion last year. I would like to say it's in a different dorm. I'm not sure which one, but uh, pretty much you'll live in it. Uh, the entire floor will be STEM majors. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and they're all freshmen. So you'll be taking the same classes together living together. And then that's actually how I met most of my, you know, best friends now here on campus. So I just want to highlight those programs. And then kind of like uh, what the other two students are saying, there's a lot of internships, um, you know, possibilities for us being in these type of majors. Um, I was in a, a internship last summer. It actually got canceled because of COVID. It was actually a research opportunity. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about me. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think this is a good time to open it up for questions. If anybody has some, um, just put them in the chat. Um, you can direct them either to Brandon or to me. Yeah, feel free to use the chat. Um, I know that you know at most people have their microphones muted, which is totally fine. You know, if you want to use the chat or just unmute yourself for a quick moment and ask away, please. You know, that's what we're here for. That's part of this session. So if you want to ask questions to you know, to our faculty, to, you know, to me, to our students, let, you know, ask away and we'd be happy to, you know, tell you, you know, and, you know, answer any questions that you might have. So uh, chat or anything. Um, while we wait, um, I figured I'd ask, you know, the students, you know, don't, you know, like not to put you on the spot or anything like that, but do you, uh, what, you know, if you could share maybe one quick, uh, one quick favorite memory of John Carroll, you know, of your time here, um, you know, and maybe your time in, in your major, um, just while we wait for you know, the, the questions to come in the chat. Does anyone have anything that comes to mind really quickly? Hey, Nick, tell us about the walking on water thing that you did oh, as part of the STEM program. I forgot that you were a part of that one, Nick. That's awesome. Right. Um, so part of the STEM scholarship, uh, freshman year, we came here two weeks early. And um, our task for that two weeks was to kind of build shoes that allowed us to walk on water um like when you just kind of hear that you're just like like what what are we so we actually had to use recycled materials so we kind of just went to you know dollar tree dollar store we went to um home depot we kind of got wood um pool noodles things like that and we just kind of had to put together these these really weird and bulky like shoes that kind of just allowed you to float because really to float you just had to displace um the density that you're kind of trying to put on the water my project did not actually end up working um so i went for a little bit of a swim <laughs> um there but uh one one kid actually did end up working so that was actually pretty cool and then we just presented kind of our process and make, uh, making those shoes so it was a really fun experience how did you do yours because i know that i saw some that were like stilts and then some right. people just put boats on their feet so um we actually partnered up i was partnered with a physics major so i thought we had it in the bag i i honestly <laughs> thought that with you know math major physics major i thought we were just there's no way we were going to lose this um we built ours like high instead of long ways, which ended up long ways ended up working. So if you ever had that project, I'd, I'd make it long. Um, we made ours, I want to say two feet by one foot by one foot or half foot, something like that. So they were like these really big stilts. Um, it ended up working. Like we were able to like walk on the water. It's just that balance came into an issue just because it was so high. Yeah. Um, so once we actually did hit the water, the water just kind of swooped from under us. And I, like I said, I kind of went for a swim. Uh, in the John Carroll pool here. Hey, Dan, why don't you tell about uh, the project that you and I worked on in the uh, machine learning class where uh, you got the uh, Elon Musk uh, machine learning <laughs> yeah, That's why I was laughing. I don't know if you saw me giggling or not. But uh, <laughs> so um, 
Yeah, we worked on um, building out this neural network that could basically you could upload um, really big bodies of text into it and it could essentially read the big body of text that you uploaded. So say, for instance, you have um, like a movie script or something and you want to generate a summary of what happens in the movie, you could do that. Or say you're struggling with understanding a chapter for maybe a philosophy class in particular that's uh, really really kicking your butt. Uh, you could you could get a little bit of assistance for that class. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a sweet project. It was really fun. And um, oh yeah, it could it could also do text generation. So you could do basically like chat body things with it, and it was. Um, we gave a bunch of samples of writing to a bunch of people in the class um, and said, okay, which statement was generated by artificial intelligence? And I don't remember, I think two people were able to figure all of them out. Um, it but it, it was tough. Yeah, I think, and I think there were like 25, 30 ish kids in that class, somewhere in that range. Um, but yeah, it was, that was a really cool project. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I have a, a question that came in um, asking about internships. Uh, do students get academic credit for them and how do students get internships? Um, so we do have a very few number of internships that students get academic credit for. Um, those are part of the major in computer science with healthcare technology. Um, they are partnered with the Cleveland Clinic and they are competitive, students have to compete for them. Um, the vast majority of internships that students get in the department are not credit bearing, but they get paid for them. And um, we're really encouraging students to use the Career Services um, Center to help find internships. Um, you know, when companies contact us and say, hey, you know, we have this internship, I always ask them to make sure they post it on the Career Center site so that all students can find it. Um, so, so that students also are very um, creative about going out on their own and finding internships. So um, there are lots of internships available in the greater Cleveland area. And the, like I said, career services in particular will help you find them. Um, and then the student also had um, some questions of hey, asking more. Yeah. Uh, before, before we leave the subject of internships, um, I did want to point out that um, we have an ongoing program relationship with the Cleveland Clinic where we have those slots that Barbara mentioned, or Dr. D'Ambrosia, excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, but what we do is we also have had students um, in the healthcare uh, technology major um, work at other locations um, for credit. So we've had students at the Steris Corporation, we've had students at the uh, university hospitals uh, uh, nearby campus. We've also had uh, uh, two students working at the um, suburban Green Green Road, which is uh, sort of a small medical uh, facility. So there are a number of opportunities there, and that's associated with the healthcare major. Yeah, and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how you get internships and, and um, connections to career opportunities, I encourage you to chime into our next presentation at 1215, uh, where you can hear more from uh, the Center for Career Services. All right, thanks. Um, okay, so another question was about the living learning communities. Um, so the university has a number of these living learning communities um, set up in the residence halls. Um, Nick, you probably know more about that than I do, or Brandon probably knows some things. For, for living learning communities, um, the, uh, the, the opportunities to join living learning communities are somewhat dependent on, you know, what major you're in, but obviously if you're interested in one of these majors, you could, you could partake in, in it. Um, I'm not sure where the living learning community is taking place this year. They kind of rotate the halls on a cycle because we update and renovate our residence halls. Um, we kind of do one renovation of a hall every year. So things kind of rotate. But um, if you're interested in joining that, you can contact your enrollment manager and let us know. We have the connections that we would uh, upload on your JCU gateway. We could get you connected with the program and, and things like that um, so that you could learn more and apply to the living learning community there. Um, so I hope that helps. Yeah, so the, the thing about the living learning communities is that you're living with students whose academic interests are similar to yours. 
Um, so as, as Nick said, he lived on a STEM living learning community. So a lot of the people that he was living with were also taking classes with him. It, it really promotes opportunities for study groups. Um, they do have some programming periodically. They'll have events. I know that I've attended, you know, meet the faculty STEM living learning events before. So, um, so it really is an, an opportunity to, to, to promote a, a bigger blend between your learning experiences, your academic experiences, and your living experience. Yeah, I um, and then, that, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, really quickly, I always say that living learning communities are a great bridge between high school and college. You know, we're not in an enormous school where you're not going to know everyone, um, but it is nice to have a core group of people with shared interests and shared experiences and stuff that you can bond with as you kind of leap maybe out of your hometown or, or you know, to a new unfamiliar experience. So, yeah, if you get the chance, it's worth looking into. Hey, Nick, uh, you're, you're rooming with somebody that you met in the living learning community, aren't you now? Um, yes, I am. Um, my roommate was also the same roommate I had my freshman year. So he was also part of that uh, learning living community. Awesome. Great. Thanks. Also a math major, by the way. Yes. <laughs> um, Dr. Palmer, do you want to answer the question about uh, recommending a particular type of computer? Yes, I, I just saw that in there and I was about to go for it. Uh, so um, computers these days are uh, advanced enough so that it doesn't there are very few instances where having one is going to prevent you from doing things that uh, having the other one uh, allows you to do. So the, the first criteria when you're choosing a computer should be the one that works for you. So if you have a, a favorite type of computer, you, you should continue to go with that. However, uh, I will say that um, for the most part, John Carroll uh, University is a Windows um, university. Uh, we, uh, most of the labs that we have have Windows machines. Most of the students we have are using Windows computers. We do have Mac labs on campus. Um, they're spread throughout. There's, uh, there's one in the Digital Learning Center or the Digital Commons. Um, there's some in the uh, administration building. Um, but for the most part, um, the, the most important criteria is that you get a computer that you're comfortable with and that you can use. Now, having just said that, there is a piece of software that I'm using in my data visualization class this semester that does not work on Macs, that only works on Windows. And for those students who are in a situation where they weren't able to uh, run that software on their machines, we've done a number of different uh, things to get that to work. We have uh, remote access to Windows machines. I have one student who's coming to campus um, early next week to pick up a laptop so that she could use it at home. Um, so there's, there's lots of opportunities there, but, but get one that works for you. Thanks. All right, we're just about out of time, but I do want to answer a question about um, in-person versus online classes. So as you may know, last fall, we were 100% virtual. So everything was, was done online. Most classes met synchronously, meaning that they were live classes. They were just delivered through Zoom. Um, this spring, we're um, kind of half and half. I think a little more than half of our classes are face-to-face -face for the students who want to be face-to-face. -face. And if you watched the CAS video before you came into this, you saw some of that in action. I think there were some some videos of Dr. Colin Swearingen teaching a class. Uh, everybody's masked with, with, with distancing. We're expecting that for the fall semester we'll be primarily face-to-face. -face. Um, you know, things are still a little up in the air. We, we may still be wearing masks. We may still be observing some level of physical distancing, but we're expecting a, a, an almost return to, to completely face-to-face. Yeah. And Brandon can correct me if I got any of that wrong. No, that's 100% correct. You know, what I have been telling people is that we're, we're anticipating business as normal in the fall, but um, like, you know, maybe with a little bit of masks, maybe with some social distancing, uh, just a little bit. Um, we're, you know, we're always um, ass continually assessing the situation because with vaccinations rolling out and, you know, the, the situation constantly changing, it's impossible to say where we'll be, you know, six months from now because I didn't know we'd be here six months ago. So it's, you know, it's 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 not a, an exact science, but with, you know, the with the guidelines from the Ohio Department of Higher Education, the NCAA, and the governor and everything like that, it's looking optimistic. We're we're very optimistic about a a return to campus in the fall. So with um with that, we've reached. Uh, noon. So I want to be respectful of your time. 
Um, again, I'll remind you that um, our next sessions will be happening synchronously um, with the Bowler Professional Development uh, uh, presentation for students interested in business, but that, but that will be taking place at the same time as the Center for Career Services, which is the, the office on campus that'll help out with all of your uh, internships and uh, you know, mock interviews, uh, resume writing, things like that. Um, that will be taking place at 1215, so you've got a little bit of time to hop over. But um, if you have any other, you know, uh, questions as you go through the day, uh, we'll, we'll, the faculty and the staff are here to help out with all that. So um, stay tuned to the JCU Celebration website. Um, check out the Spotify list. Don't forget to make the, uh, you know, to accept your offer of admission if you haven't already. But thank you all again for joining us. Um, we're so happy you were here today. And um, I hope you have a great rest of your day at Celebration. So thanks again, everyone. Bye.